Hello everyone, my name is Rajiv Priyadarshi and I'm here to talk briefly about our new training course on IBM Infosphere Data Replication, also known as IIDR. In this brief video, we'll talk a little bit about IIDR and what it entails. This will be followed by a brief demo where we'll actually show you the course uh, and how IIDR is used. So let's think of a scenario. So here's a scenario in which there's a credit card company and it is keeping track of all your transactions. So suppose I go to Walmart, buy $7 worth of dr drinks and that message goes, gets recorded in the credit card company's transactions. Now, there's a need to monitor the risk. So to make sure that you are able to track how much exposed I am from a credit perspective. So as a result, any changes in the transaction table which is per pertaining to any transaction on my credit card, it needs to be replicated on a operational data store where I can do the analysis for risk. Now you can ask, hey, why can't I do this analysis on my transaction table? The reason you cannot do this analysis on the transaction table because the transaction table, the purpose is to capture all the transactions and the speed of capture is very, very important. So by doing any kind of an analysis on this table, you lose the performance for the transaction rights. So as a result, all of that analysis has to be done in a different database. And at the same time, you have to make sure that as and when you do this analysis, as and when you try to replicate the data from the source to the target, you do not spend any extra CPU cycles in this process. And that is why we need a tool like IIDR or Infosphere Information Data Replication. So this is also known as change data capture or there's a variation of that called change data delivery. So the way data replication happens in IIDR is it uses a technology called log scraping. This technology allows you to sync the data across multiple different databases without using a ton of CPU cycles, which means it does not impact any other process which might be happening on that database. So it captures the inserts, updates, and deletes, and you've got a centralized platform. Any kind of a change on the source, it can be replicated to a target database, it could be replicated to a message queue, or it could also be sent to a tool like IBM Infosphere Data Stage. Now you might ask, hey, why do I need to send it to something like Data Stage? So here I'm gonna talk about another business scenario. So in scenario one, you have got the source that needs to be put in the target. So that was the simple scenario that I talked about for the credit card company. But I also have a second scenario in which any change in the source, it must be Refle uh, reflected in a target database, but as it is getting reflected in the target, I want to perform some transformations on that data. So for that, the source changes can be sent to data stage where I can run some of those trans transformations and that transformed data can be written to the target. This results in sync up with enrichment or transformations and that is a good case to use data stage in the middle. So in this scenario, I've got a source table, I've got data stage in the middle, and then the output goes to a target table or a target queue. So as we are using log scraping, it uses less CPU cycles and it reduces the overhead. And we also wanna make sure that the network traffic is minimal, so you send only the changed and the inserted data instead of just giving the sending the whole snapshot, which can really reduce the network, it can really reduce the performance and it can increase the latency. So we'll talk a lot more about IIDR in our course. So I would recommend you to join this course and 
get to understand exactly how IIDR works so that you can implement IIDR within your organization on your project. To know a little bit more about IIDR and how it works, just please wait for the demo in the second part of this video. I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Thank you for watching this video. So for this, I'm going to go to Management Console, which I have opened over here, and I'm going to go to my Monitoring tab. So the Monitoring tab is where I would be controlling my replication, and I would also be monitoring my subscriptions. So to, to start the replication, first let's click on Purchasing. Let's right click on this and click on Start Refresh. Now this should show you all the tables which would be refreshed and click on OK. Now if you notice, the status just changed over here to one running on refresh. Now when the refresh completes, it is going to go back to an active state. As you already know, refresh is a periodic update where you capture the changes as from whatever was changed last time. So refresh is not real time. So in case you make any changes and you run the refresh again, then I'd, uh, uh, CDC would capture the changes. We have not done any changes to the source. Now let's just try running the refresh again. You can see the message which says there is nothing available for, for refresh in the selected subscriptions because we have not done any changes from the last time. Now let's do a change. Let's start a ref, uh, the replication for sales. Now if you remember it, sales was defined as a real-time replication where we would be continuously mirroring. So let's start and let's say start mirroring. Okay. So when we do a mirroring, first thing, uh, if we have not done a refresh on that particular subscription, what is going to happen is first, a full refresh would occur so that the database is brought in sync with what is in the source and then there would be a continuous mirror which would start. So that's why you get the warning which says there are 19 tables that will be refreshed before the mirroring starts. Now when it comes to mirroring, you also have the option of a continuous mirror where the replication is forever active. In case of restarts, the mirroring gets starts again. Or you can do a scheduled end where you can say, you can either give a specific time when you want the mirroring to end or you can say the option now where the where CDC would continuously look for changes and when it finds that there are no more changes coming in, it would stop the mirroring. Uh, you also have the option of giving a specific log position, uh, but however, that would have to go into the details of the logs where you would manually go to the logs and say replicate up to this position. So that would be the least used option. So let's go to continuous and then click on OK. So as you can see, the first thing it goes to is a refresh so that it is refreshing before the mirror. You can see the state over here which says refresh before mirror. So once a refresh is done, then it is going to go to the mirror state where it is continuously looking for changes. So the refresh is completed and now it has gone to the mirror stage. So in, when it's mirroring, CDC is continuously looking for changes and any change which it detects on the source is automatically uh, pushed to the target. Let us now test out our mirroring which is occurring on the sales table by opening SQL Server and let's run the simple query and let's start. So this says 104 rows were moved from the database IIDR test 01. I'm sorry, the database IIDR test 03 to IIDR test 01. Now, if you notice over here, there are two databases over here, IIDR test 01 and IIDR test 03. IIDR test 03 and IIDR test 01 are copies of each other, except that test 01 has no data, test 03 has all the data. Now the reason why we are given it over here is so that you can play around with CDC as much as you want and so that you can test everything which you want on these two data sets. Now that finishes having uh, testing the uh, that finishes testing the replication on the SQL Server database. The next part would be to go check uh, whether the replication has actually inserted records into the DB2 target. For that, we'll have to open IBM Data Studio, which is next. Let me close this. No. Now let's test the mirroring which we have activated on the sales schema. For this, first I'm going to launch IBM Data Studio. I'm going to click on Start, go to All Apps, 
and I'm going to launch the Data Studio 4.1.2 client. Let's give it a couple of seconds to launch. And once it has opened up, let's expand the local host section and there expand DB2 and then right click on the test01 database and click on connect. For the password, you would use the password which was supplied to you for logging into the instance. Click on OK. Now let's click on tables. Let's go to the sales.currency table, right click on that and click on data, browse data. And as you can see, there are no records in your target. Now let's go ahead and insert some records into the source. Now in your source, if you notice, you have two databases, IIDR test 01 and IIDR test 03. IIDR test 01 is the database on which you have your application active. IIDR test 03 is a copy of IIDR test 01, but with all of the data which are which is there for you to play around with. So that is, explore all the different possible combinations of replication. Now I'm going to take the data from IIDR test 03 and copy it to IIDR test 01. Which, so basically, this is going to act as an insert into IIDR test 01. Let's execute this. So now we have 105 records which were inserted into IIDR test 01. Now let's go ahead and look at the DB2 side of things. So we already confirmed that there were no records before this insert, I mean bef uh, before the replication happened. Let's go ahead and right click on currency and click on data, browse data. As you can see whatever was inserted over there in your source has been replicated to your target. I encourage you to go ahead and explore multiple different combinations you have databases which are available with multiple records over here. You have the system to play around with um, and you have SQL Server and DB2 available. Go ahead and test all possible combinations for the replication. We are here if you need any help. Thank you.